Gruesome details have emerged in the murder of 26-year-old Shraddha Walkar. Now, the murder was allegedly committed by her live-in partner, Aftab Amin Poonawala. Now, while there are chance of hanging Aftab to death or demanding a death penalty for him, does the Delhi police have actual evidence to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Aftab actually murdered Shraddha? Forget whether he gets a death sentence or not. Is there enough evidence to even secure a conviction in a court of law? Hello and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk Law. I'm Anusha Soni. Today we dissect the evidence in the infamous Shraddha murder case and also talk about what's needed to secure a conviction in a highly tricky case of this nature. Well, beyond sensationalism and the gory details, to convict a person in a court of law is a completely different ballgame altogether. Especially for a crime where months have lapsed and police has no immediate crime scene to look into. Let's break it down for you. What is it that the police needs to prove a murder case, fundamentally speaking? Understand these three fundamentals of criminal law and this applies for any murder case. The act or the actus reus, the intention or the mens rea and causation. Now in criminal law, these three parts to the crime, especially of murder, needs to be firmly established for a case to be proven. And the standard is beyond reasonable doubt. Let's talk about the first aspect. First, the act. For example, Delhi police claims that Aftab strangulated Shraddha. Now, this is solely based on the testimony given by the accused to the police, Aftab in this case. There's no other evidence on record to prove that Aftab actually killed her in this matter. There's no eyewitness. Her body has been chopped up in multiple pieces and thrown in different parts and places. So that makes it impossible to establish the actual act of killing Shraddha. The alleged killer is the only witness against himself. How will the police prove the case if Aftab backtracks on his confession, which happens in most of such cases? Crucial to the act of murder is the weapon with which Shraddha was brutally chopped into pieces. That weapon has not been recovered so far. And the recovery of the murder weapon or any weapon that was part of a crime of this nature is central to the investigation. So on the first facet, which is about establishing the act of killing, this is a very tricky proposition for the Delhi police to prove in the court. Let's come to the second bit. More than the act of committing murder, higher importance is placed in law on the intention of the accused. The intention to commit murder or mens rea or the motive to kill. What was the motive of killing Shraddha? Was it a crime done in a fit of rage or a cold-blooded murder? If it was a cold-blooded murder, then what was the key motive of the accused? There are a lot of statements doing the rounds. Parents have claimed that Aftab was violent towards Shraddha. But the mere fact that Aftab was physically abusive towards her may be a hint towards his character as a person, but it's no evidence against him for proving murder. The presence of violence in a relationship points to strained ties, but that's not necessarily any kind of evidence in a murder trial. There are only patchy details available as to what led to the murder, the intention. It's been reported that an argument between Shraddha and Aftab led to the crime, but we don't know what exactly was the trigger. So even on the intention bit, there's a lot of corroboration that is needed. The third and the most important one in a case like this, the third aspect. It's about the chain of causation that needs to be established. Let me simplify this. The chain of causation means that one detail after another that establishes how the murder was committed. Each piece needs to be recreated, substantiated, brick by brick as to how it happened. And in proving the chain of events brick by brick, even if one detail falls flat, then the case falls like a house of cards. Circumstantial evidence, the buzzword, which means the forensic evidence, phone records or statements of different people who might be associated with the case or may provide some leads is very crucial. This case fundamentally is about circumstantial evidence. Now let's come to the key challenges in securing the conviction. We have understood the three facets. What are the hurdles that lie in the way? That's what we talk about. The first and the most important one. 
The biggest hurdle is the heavy reliance of the prosecution or the police on the statement or confession made by Aftab. Police is following the leads given by Aftab and there is no alibi, there is no independent witness to confirm or reject the claims made by him. As the prime suspect, he can easily lead the police in any direction and botch up the entire investigation, confuse the investigation. There is no accused who would testify against themselves. There is no confession in a murder case that happens solely on the basis of confession. Secondly, the narco test in a case of this nature, would it really help? Would it be important for the court? Most experts will tell you that narco test in a case of this nature would not really help much. The courts are highly suspicious. They do not treat narco or polygraph uh, test as evidence which are conclusive in nature. Each detail emerging from the test needs to be aided by corroborative evidence. So one does not expect any dramatic evidence out of the narco test unless aided by some other evidence. While the gruesome details of how the body was disposed of has shocked the entire country, that's what is dominating the headline, the key to securing the conviction lies in that dingy room where allegedly the crime happened. If the police can establish that it is in that room that Aftab strangulated Shraddha, chopped her body into multiple pieces, only then there is a possibility of securing a conviction. Pieces of body found in different locations establish the death of Shraddha, but not her murder by Aftab. For that to be established, evidence from the scene of the crime would be very crucial. Some experts say that there is forensic technology which is available with which one can determine blood spots or presence of blood which may be even months old in an apartment. Well, to conclude, only a smart, professional and highly efficient forensic investigation can secure a conviction in a highly difficult case of this nature. To sum it up, right now, Aftab is the alleged murderer and the witness against himself. Thanks for watching.